Hello there everyone, Cody Gadi here. Welcome back to another video. And today I am here talking about like we're gonna read this article about controlling your cats and dogs. So even though we know we can't control them, I've still been getting comments and I know the sim gurus have been getting tweets and everything about why can't we control the pets? You know, what are your opinions about not being able to control like they asked me, what are your opinions about not being being able to control pets? And well, in the beginning, I was really salty because I wanted to be able to control my pets and like tell them what to do and things. But I read this article and I was like, I, I definitely need to share it with you guys because you need to know the reasons why we can't do it. And everything is like, it comes it comes together in this article and it makes a lot of sense. So I'm just going to read it to you and kind of give you my opinions on the final decision. So this is on thesims.com by Grant Rodick. Okay, so same guru Grant. Um, let's start. One of the first questions we asked ourselves long before starting, it was one, it was one of the, you know, we, before starting the game, blah, blah, blah. Um, in The Sims 2, you couldn't directly control pets. In The Sims 3, you could. So they went back in the games they played. So they finally decided what they wanted to do, which was that we shouldn't. They, sh they shouldn't let us c control pets. So he explains, before we continue, let's take a step back and examine other aspects. I'm a dog owner and I have been my whole entire life. My Corgi Peaches, very cute dog, is often the focus of my weekends. My wife and I take her to the beach, throw her in the car to shop, and we read in the backyard so she can enjoy the sun. We don't dote do do on her. I've never heard that word. Anyways, um... We knew our cats and dogs in The Sims 4 needed to be responsive, observant, and obsessed with The Sims, their owners, their companions. We also knew that we wanted them to be surprising, to act in an unexpected and delightful ways, and to be living creatures. We were guided by the idea that cats and dogs would be like Sims for your Sims. So, I get it. Because, okay, we have, just take corgis, the, the, the peaches, the corgi, for example. If you have a, a dog in the game and you can control that dog, yes, you could stop it from chewing up the couch. And yes, you could stop it from, you know, doing things you don't want it to do. But you could also just do that through your sim by just telling it to stop. Because, like, I have a cat right there. Like, I get it. The sims is supposed to be about controlling life. Like, I have a cat right there. I can't control him. I can't, like, I can't stop him from doing things unless I make sure he stops doing things so i get what they're saying i know some people still are going to think oh but it's the sims we deserve to control but in my opinion if you have a dog going back to what i was going to say if you have a dog and that dog just randomly changes into a costume and starts swimming in the pool that is going to be the most adorable thing you've ever seen whereas if you were to change it into a costume and you made it go in the pool it'd be like oh my gosh that's so cute but the fact that it has a mind of its own and is going to go swim in a pool in a little shark costume by itself like how cute is that it just brings everything to a whole nother level and how cute would it be like if you were just sitting on the couch as a sim watching tv and your dog or cat came up to you and started jumping on you and like scratching your leg because it wanted food like that is just so cute like it's telling you you want things so like i think this whole decision not to let us control them is all right because toddlers are a pain in the butt so i don't know maybe like this is gonna help us like control pets more i'm not really sure but we're gonna read the rest of this article this brings us back to control there are many factors to play here um some technical some design but in a nutshell if the players could see and control a very small aspect of their cat and dog it would it made it difficult for us to make them surprising fun and to do surprise to do surprising fun and unexpected things which i understand um, when we could pair all the options, we knew that our game would be most fun if we didn't let players select cats and dogs, but instead gave you other ways to interact with them. We made this decision. It fundamentally opened up things we could do with the cats and dogs that we can't do with Sims even. Um, this doesn't mean they're wild and without control. Far from it. I'm going to give some examples, but before that, let me ask, how do you control your cat and dog in real life? How do you get them by your side when you want to pet them? Or how do you get them to sit when they're misbehaving? This answer in your mind is how it works in the game too. When your pets need attention to solve their needs, they'll animate, act in certain behaviors, communicate with their sims, and yes, the UI will tell you what they need. You could even ask them. So that is good. Like, unlike a baby, and the babies in The Sims 4, they're so stressful, like, you don't know what they need whatsoever. But, like, now it, you know, they'll come up to us, and they'll be cute and everything. So I like that. So we're going to read some examples. 
When they act badly, you can train them to stop. When you want them by your side, you can call them immediately over to you. But like all the good dogs and cats, there's a good chance they'll be at your feet, walking alongside you, or snoring on the cat next to your sims already. If you want your dog to breed with another dog, you can instruct them to. When you need your cat to sleep in a certain bed, you can call them to do so. In a nutshell, you won't be frustrated by lack of control. We've taken great pains to design, implement, and test an assortment of solutions and content to make sure that isn't the case. But we've also filled the game with unique behaviors behaviors and attributes for your cats and dogs so that you'll you'll be observing and telling stories for years so there we go like attributes meaning that we are going to have traits for cats and dogs which you knew but like i hope that me reading this to you is helping you realize that we really don't need to control them because it's just so cute just having them like it's just be so cute to have a cat jump on sleep on the the couch themselves because they love their owner so much Whereas if it's like, you know, if I were to control it, I would never think about having them sleep on the couch because that's not what the cat wants or the cat, the dog wants. I would probably make them sleep in their bed. So I just think everything that they're doing is so cute. So I know I've kind of been stuttering and just like reading throughout this video. But if you guys have any ideas, any concerns, um, any concerns or ideas, leave them in the comments down below because I will discuss them with you and I will talk about them. Um, later today, I will be live streaming some noah's life for those of you that are fans of my channel if you're new here welcome um i will be having a lot more pets videos coming out soon i have a bunch of videos planned school starts in a week though so it's upsetting but i'll still try and upload as much as i can but that is it so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did please like and pick up i'll see you guys all again next time goodbye Ooh.